we have got a gentleman that doesn't look old enough to have 40 years in personal development. Is that correct, Doug? 40. Yes. You start very, very young. 17. 17, okay. Do the maths. Very good moisturizer there, mate. He's <laughs> 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 had 30 years, 30 years in property investing as well. So he knows what he's talking about. And for the past three years, he's been teamed up with his business partner, the very handsome, much younger looking chap over there, Mesud Sally. Have I said that correctly? Correct. Mesud Sally. And they've been focusing on this niche market that I know nothing now, so I'll be taking lots of notes. It's called installment contracts. So it's enabled them to massively grow the portfolio and is generating profits between 40,000 and 50,000 per deal. How on earth do they do that? Let's find out how they do it. Big warm up of the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Very good. Are you have are you ready to listen to the best talk? Yeah. Oh, this year. <laughs> oh good. Nottingham. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. Right, well tonight we are going to show you how you can be making between 40 and 50,000 pounds on every deal using instalment contracts. Three. And we're going to show you how to do that without taking out a mortgage. Three. Without the need of a deposit. Three. Without finding any tenants, without running a credit check, without finding any tenants. That's a new one. It's all about property investing for investors. Without paying for voids or repairs, without paying for any maintenance, and in fact you can do that without any experience whatsoever. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Doug Ponsman. And um, <coughs> back in the late 80s, I set up uh, an IFA mortgage broking practice, and I became a creative financing specialist, a specialist mortgage broker. Um, and I learned some very clever creative financing strategies, which enabled me to purchase property using other people's money, OPM as it's called. Um, I remember the very first deal that I purchased back in over 25 years ago now. I wasn't born. You wasn't born then. Well, <laughs> 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 anyway, the property value was 60,000. I agreed a price of 40,000 pounds, so it's a below market value deal. I went off to the bank and borrowed 57,000 pounds. I paid for 40 ended up with £17,000 in the bank. Ching, that's the way to do it. So for the last 25 odd years, I've been building my own property portfolio using none of my own money, using the bank's money. Um, that's enabled me to build a multi-million pound portfolio, which I manage myself today with a couple of members of staff back in, in Kent, where I come from. That produces uh, an annual income of one into six figures. In fact, it's not an annual income, it's an annual profit of one into six figures. Uh, for the last three and a half years, because of the banking crisis that was happened in around about 2007, it became difficult to obtain mortgages from the banks. Most of you here may remember that. So I decided to focus on a new strategy called installment contracts. And luckily at that time, my business partner, Masood, came along. Um, so together we focused our attention on installment contracts. We specialise in installment contracts and in the last three and a half years, I've massively grown my portfolio, and we're averaging on uh, on each deal between 40 and 50 thousand pounds profit, and we've done around about 40 deals. Masood, over to you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Masood Sally. I'm only 26 years old. <laughs> uh, I uh, came in 2005 uh, in the UK as a student. I um, attended Richmond American International University very soon switched to another university. When I was at uni, first day, I arrived £825 in my pocket. I had to pay £800 maintenance fee to the university. Next day I had £25 left in my wallet. I didn't know anyone, I didn't have any friends, and my English wasn't as good as it is now. So, um, 
what I have to do is I had to make it work. All my family's hope was on me. I, I came from a very, very poor background and I had to make it work in the UK. I found a job very quickly and started working part-time in a restaurant. And the restaurant members were living in a, um, in a staff house in Twickenham, Richmond. Uh, soon I realized that the house was a very big house and only two rooms were occupied. I asked the owner of the restaurant if I could manage the property and uh, pay the mortgage, pay the bills, and uh, rent, that, rent the other rooms. So I rented uh, all the rooms. I started renting the um, uh, lounge and moved everyone uh, as a communal area to the porch. And soon I realized I was making more money from one property than I was making working part-time in a restaurant. So that paid for my university education and I lived for free. I realized property is powerful. How am I going to make more money from this thing? How can I buy more properties? I tried to buy the traditional way. I called Doug uh, one day and asked, Doug, can you get me a mortgage? He said, no, you haven't got any chance. Lenders have stopped lending. I said, Doug, you have to find a way to get that, to make this work and find a way to buy properties um, without investing any money and without any um, without a mortgage. So tonight we're going to show you how we make 40, 50,000 pounds without putting any money down and no mortgage. So let's have a look at an overview of the segment. We're going to show you what is our instalment contract. We're going to show you how we're managing or how we're uh, making massive profits on each and every deal. So I can hardly see this screen, so you have to bear with me. Uh, we're going to show you some real life examples. Uh, we're going to show you how we're buying and controlling property using a single document. And then we're going to bring our offer to you. For those of you that are interested in what we have to speak about tonight, there is an opportunity for you to learn more. So for those of you that don't want to learn anymore, just close your ears. Uh, but those of you who are interested, I have an offer for you at the end of the presentation that will take no more than a few minutes to explain it. So without further ado, Masood... What is an instalment contract? Masood... An instalment contract isn't an option. What is it then? Well, most people think it's an option, and a lot of people that do options believe that they do instalment contracts and options. But if you know about instalment <coughs> contracts, you would never do another option again. In fact, it's like a standard purchase. In fact, we use instalment contracts as an exit strategy, not as a buying strategy. We're going to show you some buying strategies and controlling strategies tonight, but it's an exit strategy. Um, it's like a standard conveyance, so what we do is we go off and find a buyer for the property that we've controlled or we purchased. The buyer exchange, exchanges contracts with the seller and moves into the property and pays us each month by instalments instead of going down the bank and obtaining a mortgage. So the marketplace that we're looking for of all of those people that are forced to rent because they can't get a mortgage or because they haven't got a big enough deposit or a combination of both. So what part of the, com of the UK population today do you think can't get a mortgage? The biggest part or the smallest part? Biggest part? So we're looking, our, our audience, our marketplace is the biggest part of the population in the UK today. Those people that are unable to obtain a mortgage. So it presents more opportunities because we are well, we're marketing to a very, very large audience. It is the most profitable strategy by far um, because we take money uh, or we, we, we make profits from day one um, on an ongoing basis. It's a unique money making strategy because it provides profits from day one. It also provides profits on a monthly basis and uh, it also provides profits at the back end which we're going to show you very clearly. But most importantly, the reason why it's the most profitable strategies because it removes all of the costs and the headaches that a tenant brings. Most people today are talking about HMOs as though they, you know, they're the, the hot topic of the moment, and perhaps for a lot of people they are, but with HMO brings a job with it, a job of looking after your tenants, and you have to pay for that. You have to pay for renewals and your maintenance, etc. So if we sign this total contract, how much more we can charge on the price and on the monthly payment? Between 7 and 25% more. We sell the property for between 7 and 25% more than the current market value. Did you hear that? So let's move on. And we're going to show you how we're making massive profits in every deal. So first of all, we're going to start with babysits. And I'm going to, sh I'm going to use a repetition. So we're going to keep on showing you, repeating over and over again, the strategy. 
I'm going to show you the same thing over again. I'm going to show you some few examples. But I find the best way to learn something is by repetition, repetition, repetition. So by the time I've showed you the second or third one, the penny hopefully will start to drop. What is a babysit, though? A babysit is exactly what it says. It's nothing to do with children. It's to do with property. And we babysit the property. So Glenn, who owned this property in Station Road, was a young guy who had a mortgage on this. It's a one-bed flat. He had a mortgage on this property, which was costing him the mortgage cost, ground rent, service charge. All he wanted to do was move in with his girlfriend. They were going to save, get married, have a family, and move into a family. <coughs> they couldn't start a family in this property. He couldn't sell the property because the only offers he, were, he was receiving was below the amount of money that he owed on the mortgage. So he'd been trying to sell it for 11 months, and all he was offered was silly offers which didn't allow him to sell it because it was below the, the outstanding mortgage. So we agreed with him. We said, Glenn, how would it make you feel if we were to babysit your property for you and we were to babysit your mortgage payments for you? You give us the keys around the legal document, you walk away and get on with your life and we'll look after your situation for you and we'll pay off the mortgage as well over a period of time. He jumped at the opportunity because it didn't cost him anything. And what was more surprising, it didn't cost us anything either. So we're now babysitting this property for Glenn. We're babysitting his mortgage payments for him. We've not taken over the mortgage, we're simply babysitting the payments. Now because we've now controlling this property with a legal document, which gives us the power of attorney to do whatever we wish with the property, now we can make money from it. So we decided to sell it on an installment contract. In fact, the first thing we do is put it on the market within about an hour and a half. And so what does that say? Well, buy my one bedroom flat, no mortgage needed, 5,000 pounds moves you in, uh, 597, come on, flat is yours. Call cool. Vicky. Vicky. Thank you. So, so within an hour and a half, it's on the market and we found ourselves a buyer, so we decided to sell it on an instalment contract to this incoming buyer. So give us some numbers. Get your pens and papers out. Right, this property had a mortgage of um, 82 and a half. It was probably worth, and I'll be very generous, 75, maximum 80,000 uh, pounds. So it was slightly negative equity. There was no <coughs> way Glenn could sell this, make profit. There is no way actually he could sell and not lose money. So he wanted to get rid of this. Okay, the only way is don't get suit. Okay. He brought the property in, we took the keys, put the property on the market the next day. Total purchase price, 89995 Remember, we can charge 7, 8, even 25% above market value because we're selling this double contract. They're not paying the full amount today, so we are not talking about the price. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are not selling properties here. We're selling <coughs> an opportunity to get on the property ladder. If you understand that, you'll make a fortune. Right, we advertise, if you remember, for £5,000 up front, but the lady that came in to buy, she had £19,000. So, if somebody offered you £19,000 deposit, would you take it? Would you take it? I would take it every day long. So we took it. So, uh, that reduced our cash flow to only £40 a month. This property had a quite cheap mortgage on it. Right, if uh, the buyer was to cash out, uh, <coughs> in a year or two, we would make actually £6,000 loss because we took all the £19,000 and didn't use any of it to pay the current mortgage down. So we locked the buyer in for five year period. So if they get, go and get a mortgage early, it will cost them money like a bank would charge you early redemption penalty. So uh, we put down the contract. Funny enough, after eight months, Tina said, I have divorced my husband, I've got a nice divorce settlement, now I'd like to buy you out. I'd like to pay off and transfer the title deeds on my name. I said, Tina, okay, we can do that, but do you remember that we put £6,000 redemption penalty? She said, yes, I'm happy to pay it, let's finish the deal. She paid it, and how much we made? £19,400. How much did we pay for this? Nothing. How much did we spend on maintenance and service charge and repairs? Well, it cost me a little bit to spend on the signs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. 
19,400 in how many months? Uh, about eight months. How many of you would like to steal that? So it is possible to buy property or control property without using any money. So let's have a look at another baby set. This property is owned, uh, was owned by a gentleman called Bob, and he was uh, he's a taxi driver and he, hurt his foot and he couldn't uh, work for a while, so he was going to be repossessed. We were speaking to him on Wednesday, and on next Thursday, the bailiffs were coming in to repossess the property. <coughs> he was only £1,800 in arrears with GE money, um, but there was nothing he could do, he didn't have any money. So, he was already packing his boxes and he was ready to move into his sister's house and he was quite happy to do that but he was un, unsure about these bailiffs coming in on Thursday to, to take, the, take the house from him. So I said to him, Bob, how would it make you feel if I could babysit your property for you and I could babysit your mortgage payments for you and I could pay the £1,800 of GE money and stop the repossession and I'll buy you some more time. You can stay in the house, you can pack your boxes and when you're ready, then you can move on to your sister's house and I'll pay off GE money for you. Well, he was over the moon, he couldn't wait to give us the keys. He just gave us the keys, ran a legal document and walked away. So, now we control the property, so we decided to sell it on an instalment contract to a motivated buyer. And we'll soon give us some numbers. Right. Excuse me. We've got a lot of noise going on over here. <coughs> it's all phone no, it's not, it's the feedback from where you stand to the speaker because it's quite quiet microphone. The okay. handle would be better if you got it. It's, right. your, it's yours done. Should I stay here? <coughs> Either that or use the handheld? That'd be ideal. I'll, ch I'll chance it. <laughs> Actually, ladies and gentlemen, although we saved Bob from repossession, it was slightly discounted. He had a mortgage of about £120,000 outstanding, but it was probably worth about £140,000, £150,000, the property itself. So, although we bought with it on a bank receipt, it was slightly discounted. So, we put it on right We had a right account, and it's a quite unique right account where you advertise a property under the deposit amount. So, when you advertise a property under the deposit amount, uh, when somebody clicks on right move, I'm looking to buy property in Gillingham, do you think they click lowest price first or highest price first? Yes. Thank you. When they click lowest price first, do you think our properties always come up first? Okay, if you're always on top of right move, it's a bit like being on top of Google, isn't it? So you're going to get more views, more hits, and more people will click on it. Oh, that's interesting. Let me have a look. What is it? No mortgage required. £7,000 moves you in. Uh, property is yours. Okay, we had a buyer in six hours. Write that down, six hours. So we had a buyer in the evening, and Doug here in his beautiful shoes, <coughs> doing a viewing. So Doug, can you tell us the story? How did you sell this place? Well, we should found these people where they come from, London somewhere, Dagenham. Dagenham, East London. Dagenham, East London, come all the way down to Kent with their children. And uh, Bob was in that in the property to show these people around, uh, Mum and Dad, two young children, one about this big and one about this big, at whatever age that is. Um, so we're standing outside the house and I said to the youngest boy, you better run inside and get and find your bedroom before your brother finds his bedroom. So we ran inside and by the time we got in there, this young boy was in the smallest bedroom and uh, he was excited because there was a bed in the room. Um, I don't think he'd ever slept on a bed. And he said, there's a bed, there's a bed. So I said, if you want the bed, go and ask Bob, he might leave it behind for you because he's moving in with his sister anyway. So he's probably selling all the furniture. So he ran in the other room, pulled on Bob's coat and said, Bob, 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 can you leave the bed for me? And Bob said, of course I can leave the bed. And that's basically what sold the house. The family, we were moving into a, a house and each of the children had a separate bedroom. The kids so, sold the bed before the family the house. So show us the numbers because we're going to run out of time. Come on. Seven thousand pounds up front, uh, two hundred and fifty pounds monthly cash flow. If you multiply that by sixty months, that's the average time <coughs> which a buyer goes and gets a mortgage for themselves. So that is the average time, or statistically, how long it takes for somebody to go and get a mortgage and cash us out. So over a five-year period, we're going to make fifteen thousand pounds in net cash flow. Back end profit. £20,000. Remember, we bought it slightly below market value. So we sold the property for £155,000 and we had a mortgage outstanding of £120,000. So £20,000 back end profit. How much have we made out of this? Forty two grand. How many of you would like that? How much did we spend on repairs? Nothing. 
How Zero. much did it cost us? Well, eighty hundred pounds just to do your money, but we got that from the deposit. Fantastic. Let's have a look at another babysitter. This is another Bob, actually, down in Kent. He was a reluctant landlord. Been trying to sell the property for nine months, and again, he wasn't being offered the price he wanted. He had fifteen thousand pounds equity tied up in this property, and that's what he wanted out of it. He wanted his fifteen thousand pounds, but nobody was offering the price he wanted. So we agreed to pay him the full asking price on the understanding that he gave us some flexibility around the time scale we deliver the money. So we said, Bob, we give you the £15,000 you're looking for, but can you give us a bit of time to deliver you that money? And he said, I don't need it straight away, so I can, I can afford some time. So we said, OK, well, let's babysit your property, we'll babysit your mortgage payments for you, we'll pay off your mortgage, and we'll deliver the £15,000 to you some way down the line, which we agree. So again, we've controlled the property, zero cost, and we've sold it for the installment contract. Quick with the numbers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Remember, you don't have to always get a discount. This property had a very, very cheap mortgage. Very cheap mortgage. So, in fact, the rate was 2.25. So, you don't have to make money on the discount. You can make money on the terms. So, we just jumped at the terms. So, we we're happy to pay Bob the price he wanted, subject to he had some flexibility. And uh, he agreed to that. So, we took the mortgage on. We took £5,000 up front. Okay? And we're making £480 net cash flow. And his mortgage is to be paying. So, massive cash flow on this property. The buyer was paying £870 a month. Okay? We sold this property, again, quite a little bit above the market value. So, our back-end profit is actually £37,000, but because we promised to pay uh, Robert um, £15,000 at the back-end, we're only going to make £22,000 uh, back-end profit. Is that a problem? It's alright, isn't it? Yeah. How much do we make on that? Well, how much do we pay for this property? Nothing. How much do we spend on repairs? Zero. Any tenants in there? No. Um, how much we make? 55,800. How many of you would like that? I want all of your hands up <laughs> at the next three deals, okay? You promise? Free recording. If anybody wants a free recording of this presentation, then um, so you're going to arrange for that to happen? Yes. Linda, if you can pass the form. So tonight we are recording uh, this event, so we'll send you an uh, email with a link, a YouTube link, so where you can go and click and listen to our presentation again and uh, remember what you learned so tonight. It's, it's good just to, to, just to see the thing again so you can pick up the little bits that you miss. So, um, this is, what's the lemon? Lemon is a property that you don't want to own. A property that is either uh, has got more debt than what it's worth, we call it negative equity, or property <coughs> that has got no cash flow or negatively cash flow where the rent is less than the monthly outgoings. Can you show us that on the, on the board? It looks a bit like that. Just imagine this property is a £100,000 house, okay? And it's got a debt of £110,000. So if you had to sell this property today, you have to take £10,000 out of your pocket, pay to the bank, and get rid of this property. It doesn't make you any money. We don't know in this current market whether it's going to go up in value and ever going to make money. You don't want to own this. So you want to get rid of it. Another example of a lemon? Okay. It doesn't have to be negative equity. It could be a property that is negatively cash flowing or about to be negatively cash flowing. It could be because the rental income is less than the monthly outgoings. It may have cost of service charges, uh, expenses, maintenance, and ground rent. It could also have be a property that is just cash flowing, but on a standard variable rate. So, if you remember recently, Santander increased their standard variable rate from 4.24 to 4.74. That all of a sudden created 70,000 um, properties around the UK that are negatively cash flowing. They were positively cash flowing just a bit, but because they increased it, they all of a sudden are negatively cash flowing. That is a lemon. Let's see what that looks like. It's still a bit like that. Rent of 5.25, um, mortgage payment of 6.45. It costs you 120 pounds every month. Do you want to own a property like that? What's the point of having 30 properties if they're not making any money? 
Let's make some money on this property, shall we? Listen, there are a lot of people that own properties like this that they put their hand in their pocket every single month to subsidise the mortgage payments. <coughs> if, you, if you people in the room, if there's one or two of you that haven't got one of these, <coughs> trust me, there are thousands and thousands of people that own these. I'm admitting that I own some of them. Uh, there's a massive opportunity to make money from property that is in negative equity and negative cash flow. How does it make you feel when you served up on lemons? A little bit like that. Go out for a steak and you end up with that. Then what to do with it? Drains your pockets every day, every month. So we're going to show you an example of some lemons. Again, we're going to repeat that example <coughs> so you understand. This is a property that I purchased in Manchester <coughs> City Centre on the canal, Mere House. Lovely property, new build off plan, didn't even go and see it. I, in fact, it was such a good deal, I bought two of those. And the, wow. and the developer gave me £12,000 cash back on each deal. So I had £24,000 as a bank, two, two modern apartments, I didn't even need to find a tenant really. Have we still got the twenty-four grand up? Well, I've spent it. I spent it on subsidising the rent and the service charge. Well done. Okay, how do we get rid of this money? So now, have you got an idea? I'll tell you a little bit about the figures if you keep writing. This property, when I checked on right look for similar properties for sale, just to check whether the property is cash flowing or uh, it's got any equity, there was another <coughs> one bedroom flat for sale for £99,000. Yeah, and it wasn't sold for the last six months. When I look at the mortgage papers, it had a mortgage of £138,500. Uh, how much negative equity is that? £40,000, isn't it? How do we sell a £40,000 negative equity house that is £120 in negative cash flow? You're just going to lose money, yeah? We've got no choice. Right. I said to Doug, Doug, let's put it on right now. Let's put it on our wonderful right now account under the deposit amount, £5,000 more zoom, uh, no mortgage required, flat is yours. Right. Here is the power of installment contracts. This is not an option. On an option, you are the landlord. You're responsible for the service charges, you're responsible for the ground rent. Okay? This house, actually, the uh, cash flow was eaten by the um, cost of service charge and the ground rent. It was nearly £120 uh, ground rent and service charge. So, when you exchange contract with a tenant buyer, now they are a buyer. So they are responsible for the uh, ground rent, they're responsible for the service charge, they're responsible for the maintenance, and you don't have letting costs or management costs anymore. Go and finish. So, from £120 in negative cash flow, now it's £260 in positive cash flow. How great is that? We sold the property for £143,999. Took £5,000 deposit, we can make £15,600 positive cash flow. Buyer is paying the service charge, he's paying the ground rent, he's paying us £805 a month on top of that. We're not going to make any back-end profit because our property is quite a bit in negative um, equity. £20,000 for a property that was £40,000 in negative equity. How powerful is that? Well, we've not only made the £20,600 profit on this property, I've also made up the £40,000 negative that I was in. So in fact, what we've done is made £60,000 profit on this property that I could not sell because if I sold it, I would have had to file, find £40,000 for my own pocket. And it was draining £120 a month out of my pocket every month. How many of you would like to help fellow investors to get rid of their negative equity properties and you make some profit? There's, these properties are every, in every city centre where they were overdeveloped by greedy developers. On every waterfront, on every bay, wherever you go, you'll find these properties. If you people here haven't got any, you'll, you will find other investors that have got plenty of them. Here, I'll then, give you a little golden nugget. <coughs> in front of you. If you know a fellow investor, ask him how much negative equity do you have on this flat? £20,000. If I made this £20,000 negative equity go away, would you pay me £7,000 to do so? Many people will pay you £7,000 to get rid of their negative equity, house, flat, etc. Write that down. So let's look at this lemon here. This is uh, in, the, um, in London, actually. It's close to City Airport, so it's a good location. But again, this person that purchased this property, purchased off plan, 
um, it was a no money down deal, the developer paid the deposit for them. And when they came to us, they were going to be repossessed. Um, so we, we actually stopped the repossession, we just offered the judge 100 quid a month on top of the normal mortgage payment, which he accepted gladly. So we decided to control this property using our single document. The problem was that it is in negative equity, <coughs> about £65,000. So we thought, how are, we, how are we going to make any money out of that? Well, it's a good location, so the value is not going to drop. The nice thing was is that it had a mortgage express mortgage on it. <coughs> The Mortgage Express mortgage is 1.75% above base, that's 2.25%, lifetime tracker. So the mortgage payments were really dirt cheap. That was a, that's how we identified how we're going to make profit from this property. So we sold it on an installment contract, give us the numbers. £7,000 up front, £551 net cash flow over a five year period. How much are we on this time? Forty thousand pounds. Yeah, forty thousand pounds. And we go into a property that is sixty-five thousand pounds in negative equity. Actually, that's hundred and five thousand pounds. That was if we had those two together, we've got sixty-five negative plus the forty thousand we've made profit, so we've made up a hundred thousand pounds on this property. The person owning this property would never have been able to sell it because they she would never have found sixty-five thousand pounds. So she basically she was stuck with it having to pay the ground rent, the service charge, and uh, the uh, mortgage. <coughs> so that's the idea of uh, lemons. Again, w these two scenarios we've given you are scenarios where we're controlling the property without actually having to pay anything for the cost of, uh, of doing so. This next one is a straightforward purchase. It's not so straightforward, but it is a purchase which many of you will understand. So it's a purchase using a mortgage, a buy to let mortgage. It's very simple. Um, a lady called Jane came to us with a property um, in Jellicoe Avenue with a value of £160,000. And she has a mortgage outstanding of £24,000. And we asked her what she wanted and what she needed. And I, I put on there actually she wanted to buy um, some land and a caravan to put on the land, which was £78,000. In fact, she owned the land. The caravan was £78,000. She wanted to live in this caravan with her horses, with her grandchildren, and see out our days there. So we agreed that we would give her what she needed, but not what she wanted, because what she wanted was £160,000. But what she needed was £24,000 to clear the mortgage, and £78,000 to buy the van. So we agreed that we would give her £110,000 now, in order for her to do that, so she immediately can walk away from the property, get on with her life, buy the caravan, pay off the mortgage. So 110,000 now, and we give her another 25,000 pounds later on around the legal agreement. Those uh, of you in here that are um, mathematicians, you can work that out, 110 to 25 actually comes to 135. The reason why we gave her 135 and she agreed to that is because uh, was the house next door was... Next door was set for 135 It was a horrible house, it was a probate, and it was all overgrown and needed work. And uh, we agreed with Jane, okay Jane, if you want us to buy this quickly, so I don't think your house is much, much more worth than the house next door. So basically we compare it to a profit house next door and she took the offer and she said okay well i understand that i think mine is worth more than that but i don't want to wait i want to move but she was motivated good so using the same strategy that i've always used on buying all of my properties i simply went down the bank and based on the uh, value of one hundred and sixty thousand pounds i borrowed one hundred and twenty thousand pounds which is a 75 percent buy to let mortgage so i borrowed one hundred and twenty thousand pounds Remember how much I had to give her now, under 10. So I got 10,000 pounds cash back, and now I owe her 25,000 pounds. So the deal looked a bit like that. Went to the bank, borrowed some money, gave her most of that, kept a bit back for myself, and now I owe her the bit, this bit later on, which we've agreed that we'll give her later on, and she's agreed that she will accept it later on. And in fact, we use a little nibbling technique in order for us to nibble back some of this money, because she's probably going to come to us a little bit earlier than later on to get the money early. And in fact, that's what, exactly what happened. 
but the lady was very happy about the deal. That's the house, it's just a, an ordinary three bedroomed ex council house. Nothing special about it other than the interior was just supreme. There were seven interior doors which cost a thousand pounds each. The carpets were thick pile and she imported the tiles herself from Italy. Um, that's Jane there and uh, Masood and their love child. <laughs> Jane was very happy, as you can see. And, uh, when she came to collect her money that she wanted from us the later bit, um, she wrote us a testimonial. I don't know if you can see that. It says there, Doug and Masood, and she spelled Masood with a love heart. <laughs> so now we've controlled in this property. Of course, we've got a mortgage on this property. We're controlling the property, and now we've decided to sell it on an instalment contract in order for us to maximise our profits. Rather than trying to multi let or sell on the open market, instalment contracts will enable us to maximise the profits on it. Right, here is the power, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have been selling already negative equity properties quite above the market value, quite much more than above market value. So I thought, okay, let's do an experiment with a normal property that will board below market value and let's see whether we can sell it 20% above market value. So I just put it experimentally for 189995 on my move, 5,000 pounds moves it in, normal to require. 1100 pounds a month. Took 5,000 pounds upfront from buyer. Then we make 606 pounds net cash flow, and over a 60 month period, we're going to make 36,000 pounds. Right? That's the cash flow. Then we're going to make 57,000 pounds back end profit. That's the difference between how much they would owe us in year five and how much uh, we need to settle our current mortgage that we borrowed from bank, if you remember. So, we don't have any problems. If the interest rates go up, we make more cash flow. If we had, a, if we had rented this property, our cash flow becomes less. So that's the power of the contract. Our rate mirrors, uh, their rate mirrors our underlying mortgage. Two, three percent above that rate. We have no void. <coughs> Remember, we have buyers, not tenants. We have no maintenance, no repairs whatsoever. We have no fees and uh, we don't need to manage the property at all. All we have to do is check the bank account if the payment is arrived. How much you paid on this? £100,000. How many of you would like to make £100,000 on a deal? Come on, all hands up. Here we go. Well done. The power of installment contracts. So let's tell you how we're controlling and buying these properties using a single document. Um, the single document is called a JV contract or a joint venture contract. It's 11 pages, very simple. And it's, um, it's already pre prepared and we just fill in the, fill in the gap basically. Each one is uh, bespoke, it's tailor made to each individual deal that we do. It enables us to instantly control the property. And the reason why that is, is because it contains a power of attorney. Once we have a power of attorney over a property, uh, we can do whatever we wish with it. We can buy it, we can sell it, we can rent it, we can live in it, do as we wish. Um, it determines the terms and conditions of the, of the purchase. It determines the length of the contract. It contains a lock-in agreement and it also contains a third party authority. The third party authority is to enable us to speak with the seller's lender so that we can now make mortgage payments uh, on behalf of the seller to the lender. There isn't a lender in this country that will not allow third party payments other than HSBC Bank and Morgan Stanley, isn't it? JP Morgan. JP Morgan. JP Morgan, okay. Well, we get round that because we set, we set up a separate bank account. Um, so a very simple third party authority, uh, sorry, a JV agreement. And then you're gonna tell us the simple steps to Buying property. Number one, find a motivated seller. At this climate, this country is full of them. Control using a single document, joint venture agreement. That's all we need. We'll teach you how to do that in our workshop. Find a buyer, put it on right move under the deposit amount. I guarantee you, you will get a call within a few hours. Sell or use an installment contract with best agreement. I just love it. It makes so much money. It makes shed lots of money. 
So, just to recap what we've spoken about tonight, we showed you what is an instalment contract. Hopefully some of you have got a bit of an idea now. We showed you how we're making massive profits from every deal. Um, we showed you some real life examples. We showed you the babysits, the lemons, the purchase. Um, and we showed you how we're buying and controlling property using a single document. Um, we usually do the live deal structure at these meetings. That means that if anybody here has got a lemon that they want to see how we, they can make some profit from it, then it's possible that we may be able to log on and uh, do that for you with our software. So see us at the back of the room if you want to do that before we leave this evening. We're hanging around until, until everything's finished. And our offer to you, just in case you're interested, is that we are running a two-day workshop in November, November the 9th and 10th, in Installment Contract Masterclass. I'll have to look up here because I can't see the screen. The first day is the uh, start of the day. We're going to talk about what makes a successful investor. So the mindset of a, an successful, successful property investor, what's the difference between a successful one and somebody who struggles to do the deals? My favorite subject, I spend plenty of time on doing that. How to buy and control property using little or no money down. You learn the entire buying and selling process, step by step. How to sniff the profits in any and every deal. How to identify where the profits are. 101 ways to market for sellers. Obviously important that we find the sellers who are buying who are selling properties. Live deal structuring so that you can see live how we actually turn a lemon into a gold mine. And on day two, step by step structure on installment contract. We're going to show you how to put a deal together step by step. So uh, also, we're going to show you how to do your research uh, when um, you are buying a house, how to market the buyers, how to find uh, buyers the fast way, not the hard way. Uh, also, we're going to show you how to convert buyers into satisfied homeowners. Remember, we are not selling properties. We're selling an opportunity for somebody to get on the property ladder. If you understand that, you make uh, lots of money and you sell houses same day. One viewing, we do one viewing and we sell the house there and then. So we have a unique way of doing that. Also, we're going to show you how to build your professional team and create wealth for life. Um, we also have a giveaway bonus, which is our no money down strategy. The strategy that makes us 100 grand per deal. Buy it normally down, sell it in contract. That's 697 normal, plus normal price, normal price. There is a early bird offer, 497 plus VAT. See us at the back of the room. We have details at the back of the room about all of this. If you want to come and speak to us, please do so. We can give you Actually, more information. we have a student here in the room, Kevin. We'd like to come front. Uh, he has attended our Chile workshop in February. Kevin, would like to give us your feedback how your life has changed since February. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Kevin Gillette. Um, I, like you, was sat in the PIN meeting listening to these two guys. Uh, what I found was very powerful was the fact that I quite like the idea of profiting uh, from actually controlling a property and not necessarily having to, to own it. Um, I'm self-employed. I know a lot of self-employed people who can't get mortgages because self-certs have all gone. Um, there's an awful lot of first-time buyers. So that's the market I focus on. Um, I'm looking for uh, high mortgage properties where people want to sell and they want to sell quickly. I can help them move on and I can make massive profits from them. Um, I've just done my first deal. Uh, Julie, the seller, wanted, to, uh, wanted full money and wanted to move quickly and I've been able to do that for her. You can see the kind of profits that are made and I currently have about six on the go. Listen, they won't all come off. I'm a realist, I understand that, but some of them will. Um, round of applause for Kevin for doing his first deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't wait until November. We filmed the last workshop that we did, so we, we've got an eight set DVD, uh, which is it normally sells at 497. For those people here this evening, there's early bird special offer, 397 plus VAT. Forms you at the back of the room, please come and stand back there and ask for any information that you may want. It's uh, a full, full quality homesteader pack, comes with all the legal documents. You can log on to this address, that address is at the back of the room if you're interested. So that you can log, log on to LondonPropertyUniversity.co.uk forward slash products, you can order your DVDs there. And it comes with all the legal documentation that you need. Every piece of paper that you could ever dream of comes with that, both the DVD and also the workshop. Access to our closed Facebook group, 
where we share information, we share deals with our students. You can connect with Kevin and other students of ours. And it comes with 30-day email support so that you're not out there on your own once you've done the workshop or seen the DVD. You have plenty of support. Um, we should just want to show you some numbers just to show you that we're not telling any lies. It's just so £10,200 profit. £5,600 profit, uh, £70,000 cash back on the deal, £5,000 deposit on the deal, £5,600 deposit on the deal, £18,000 deposit on the deal, £29,600 deposit on the deal, £51,000 cash back, £50,000 cash back. How many of you would like profits like that? My life has changed and we're here to change yours. We've got a few minutes for some questions before we go to the back of the room. Yes. Um, Twice in. My experience, thank you for your money. Um, my experience of um, getting a power of attorney is that it costs about one and a half thousand pounds. So when you're talking about no cost, I don't understand how come there's no solicitor's fees to make sure that the contract is honoured and that the people that you're taking the power of the house from and yeah. the people that you're selling to feel reassured. Are you not using the solicitor at all? I'll take your solicitor away. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. See, explain about the power of attorney. attorney is just attached on the last three pages on our joint venture agreement. As long as it's witnessed by two witnesses, <coughs> each one if it's witnessed by two witnesses, it is as powerful as it is done with a lawyer. So save yourself £1,200, find two witnesses. You don't have to have that vengeance in some fashion, or is that just between you and the... Not, not for the last time. three years. Sorry? For the last three years, uh, you could have done an enduring power of attorney, but normal power of attorney is as strong as enduring power of attorney, and uh, I don't think they're used anymore. That's what my lawyer tells me. No, they're lasting, lasting power of attorney, don't they? Now. Yeah. If you want to talk about power of attorneys, because it's a really boring subject, come and see us at the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm quite interested, actually. Come to the back of the yeah. room and we speak to you. Yeah, yeah that's no problem. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Yes, yeah, sir. So can I ask you what the position is with taxation? Because I'm guessing that you're only going to get taxed on any profit deal you do once you've completed the sale. Yeah, well, you make some profits and you pay some tax. I suppose there is somebody in the room tonight that will show you how not to pay tax. I suggest you speak to this lady here, Louise.